Somebody helps us with the microphone, if it's yeah. Needed. Yeah, oh, you have to. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, m maybe I should start uh, to Carl Johan. Don't go to the technology first, but to the to the urban fabric, uh, something like that. Is, uh, yeah. uh, I like that, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, what do, do do you think that? Uh, uh, the, this group of the, this kind of uh, or conferences we have gone uh, gone uh, t uh, too quick into uh, technology or or have we uh, uh, maybe sometimes we have uh, uh, just uh, avoided technology I, s I must say also <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, it's uh, a double uh, double it's question somehow yeah. mm -hmm. I think uh, that's of course an exaggeration but uh, if you look to different sorts of uh, conferences. You have the PRT enthusiasts, you have the bus rapid transit uh, system enthusiasts, uh, tram, and so on. <laughs> so looking into to, to urban transport, I think most approaches are coming from the technology for the urban development. Mm. I think uh, that's very important. And if you should convince uh, uh, people that could invest in systems, that could uh, uh, take the legal decisions and so on. You have to see that the system you are uh, promoting is really a, a solution, not only to be mobile, to be a part of the further urban development. If I go back to my 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 um, start here and uh, about the anthropocosmos model model from acoustics, uh, uh, what what kind of element uh, would be the start for our discussion? Um, uh, nature, man, society, shells, or networks? Uh, I'm, uh, of course, uh, I, I can answer myself. I, I think maybe we go uh, plunge uh, too quick into to the networks. And uh, maybe we forget uh, what it is about. It's man. It's about man and nature. Maybe. Well, maybe I. <laughs> yeah. I maybe also. Yeah. I, of course, you have to consider the, the sustainable part of, of the urban development very carefully. And but I think uh, it's uh, important to to what we have used as a word in uh, in in. Uh, planning in the Royal Institute is the new reality. Uh, many people are have blind spots. And mm. a normal blind spot is for what's happening just now. It's very hard to get the overview of it and uh, see the consequences of what we have done. And uh, today the urban fabric is totally uh, uh, done for cars. And uh, we, we saw uh, interesting examples of how to look at it in other ways. But take one example from Christel. Mm. If the need of a parking place in a hospital mm. is a very big problem, mm. it could be used, uh, could be a solution to don't use cars for it, uh, use the public transport from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So if you really try to solve problems with the same capacity for cars in the future, there will be no solution, I think. And uh, therefore, you have to, to look into the needs of mobility, but not the needs of parking cars. V virtualization is a, a, a way to avoid blind spots or to disguise blind spots, maybe. But blind spots are not always uh, just blind spots. Mm. It it is vested interest. It's money. Yeah. Uh, money talks. Yeah. So uh, so may maybe you can add to, to the virtualization how it can contribute to, to the democratic process. For yeah, I, I, I being a politician see. myself, <laughs> I, I I don't see how how any change in a city can take place that includes money without some kind of, of public uh, interest and public um, influence. I, I, I think it's a um, huge no in my world. Uh, and and uh, as much as I do understand and recognize that, that 
this also causes problems because people have complaints, etc. Um, but that's they're right, and and, and uh, the evolution needs to go forward. You need to see how things could be, and and. Um, for me to have this virtual visualization and also including the simulation uh, it is really important and how to not only communicate but also to influence people. It's a, it's a, it's a tool for democracy. Mm -hmm. Questions from the audience, please. <laughs> no, don't be shy. <laughs> Tom, also. So. Uh, Tom Carlson, a manager of streets and streets and uh, transport office in Uppsala. I have a speech yesterday. I, I will just give a comment and uh, believe it or not, give credit to the government. <laughs> uh, they they told us a couple of years ago that the, the city who could present the best project of Podcar is to be given uh, 20 to 30 million euros for a pilot track. And of course, that led us into technical discussions. How, how can we build a podcast track? <coughs> and we focused on the techniques. And then we got the message, there is no money. That created, uh, that gave us opportunity to be more creative and find, try to find new solutions, as we are doing now in Uppsala. Uh, now we are talking about this, how, how, can, we, how can we meet the needs and the opportunities that this will give, as you told us. Uh, so I'm sad there is so little governmental money, but in a way it it led us to a new way of meeting this problem. It, it was not question, just the comment. Scarce, scarcity can be the mother of invention, innovation. <laughs> Do I see Håkan Jansson from the minister? minister? <laughs> you want me to comment on the last uh, sentence? Uh, concerning money first, uh, of course there was an ambition, you could say, from some part of the government, my, uh, my department, that they should be try to help to finance uh, the system somewhere in Sweden. But uh, that was never really a government decision to set aside money. That was an ambition, you could say. And uh, uh, as every decision has to be taken in within the government, it's a collective uh, decision. And uh, the Ministry of Finance have a very strong voice, as you know, in all that discussion. So uh, that discussion ended up at, uh, for this uh, ambition that was no money set aside for it. And uh, I think also that. Uh, Maybe it's what's not that unwise not to, to set aside money because the product might not yet be ready for, for actually launching. So I'm, I'm not, um, not completely disappointed by the development. But uh, as you, uh, as many of you, I hope that in the end that uh, the government also can help to actually launch one or two systems in Sweden, but that remains to be seen. Hmm. Yeah. Well, one comment. Uh, I think uh, every country has uh, shares of responsibilities, and in uh, Swedish way of uh, looking at it, uh, the municipalities has the responsibility for the welfare system and the state for the infrastructure. But as we s see, perhaps from my speech, is that uh, today we are more and more uh, reliant on on the regional development and. The region itself has to produce uh, the infrastructure as needed in, in each region, uh, especially in the urban areas. So in that mean, meaning, I think uh, the municipalities has to face the fact that they have to make much more investment in the new urban fabric than they have been used to. And uh, of course, uh, that's a big uh, challenge in economy in an uncertain state. But uh, we have to find ways of uh, finding money on municipality and regional level. And I think what the state has to do is to be a sort of risk manager to see that innovation really come through, but not put money into it, perhaps. Well, thank you, Kajuan and Christopher, for very interesting presentations.
Uh, I have a question to you both, and that's about what will happen now with Uppsala. One question to you, uh, to you first. How have you avoided cultural crashes? Uppsala is an old city. When the university started in 1477, how have you avoided crashes between cultural and new modern transportation systems? Because that's what we hear often when we talk about it. That's one question. The other is, how far is Uppsala for being the first pilot track? <laughs> well, the first step in the developing of interest for PRT in Uppsala was to really to avoid the cultural sets. So we, we tried to find a solution in an old industrialized area that was changed into a commercial site. And there were no cultural sets of that sort. But when we made the first uh, uh, study for the whole city, there was a big uh, discussion around it. And we find that we could avoid the real historical area going around it and still have a coverage into that uh, old town, so to say. But I think uh, the solutions in the future could be uh, going through buildings or over buildings and that sort of stuff. And we had that sort of imagination at that time. But uh, the new structure is, I think, also avoiding the most uh, uh, critical areas you go outside uh, the uh, historical city and uh, pass it uh, in, in, in through the, the parks and so on. So there's still a way of starting. And uh, of course, if the first uh, pilot track is there, I think you could have convinced people that uh, it's not that sort of danger for the cultural sets in the city. When they, it's like wind powers in Sweden, people are afraid of it from the beginning, but when they are there, there is no problem left. Um, uh, I, I'm the only one living in Uppsala, don't you know? <laughs> 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 okay. And, uh, and uh, maybe we should send the Uppsala citizens to Wuppertal, mm -hmm. where they have the Schwebebahn uh, from a hun hundred years ago. It's an awful uh, structure, uh, iron structure over the, the, the Wupper River. Uh, but it's uh, wonderful. And when some engineers uh, suggested this should be taken away, this is not modern, the whole uh, uh, citizenship of, of, uh, of Wuppertal uh, uh, objected and uh, created their, yes. their uh, <laughs> yes sign. <laughs> uh, oh, that, that, that <laughs> Uh, it goes uh, in the river valley, uh, so you can stand up there and look uh, down in the Fidisborn <laughs> in Uppsala. <laughs> I, I think it would be a fantastic uh, challenge <laughs> to put it up over Fidisborn in Uppsala. <laughs> well, I more questions? No, I had to, uh, I had to answer Hans also. Um, you, you ask me when you, I think it's ready, and I, well, it's, it's not my decision, I wish it was. Uh, but my personal guess is the same as I did in 2007. I was given the same question in 2007, when will it be the first system in, in, in Sweden? I, I thought in 2007 it would be Uppsala, and as I thought it then it would be 2015. I still think it's going to be Uppsala in 2015. So, but, uh, we will see. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Questions? <laughs> More questions? <laughs> Any question? Planning is a difficult thing. <laughs> it's getting easier with Poka. Yes, Poka, that's fine. <coughs> Sorry, I came really late today, but uh, I wonder, maybe you already commented that, how do, how do you actually measure create creativity and how do you design an urban space? You said the urban space is very important, I agree with you, but how do you measure it if you have succeeded to create an urban well and this is a very nice place for, for new ideas, for innovation, etc. Well, how to me measure technically I can't answer, but there is lots of studies from economy, uh, geography uh, yeah. that shows that uh, innovations are coming into ports uh, uh, that means the metropolitan areas and from that spread out through the country. 
And uh, there is also a very interesting uh, European study that shows that there is two opposite ways uh, of finding innovation in milieus. And one is the metropolitan areas where uh, the networks are globally, but the market is local. The local market is big enough to, to, to take care of new innovation, if, still if they are quite uh, expensive. Uh, so that's uh, a, a modern way of, uh, of promoting innovations. But if you look uh, historically, you could see that uh, this iron works in Sweden from the 18th, 17th and 18th century, they, they produced uh, modern iron product, products uh, through very specialized areas where they have all the specialists there, but the market, market was globally, so it's the contrary situation. And uh, you need, so to say, both experts and you have, you need a big market for innovations. And they could be built up in both those two uh, scenarios. Yeah, you, you're right that the regional economies have, have studied uh, how, how creativity is uh, fostered. Uh, there is a regional scientist, uh, Emeritus, now in, in Lund, southern part of Sweden, Gunnar Törnqvist. He has studied uh, creativity through the, uh, uh, the millennia, from, from the Diagora in, 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 in Athens. Uh, and uh, for, this, uh, for, for now, nowadays, he asks himself, and uh, through the book, uh, I, I, it's a favorite book of mine, <laughs> uh, how come that uh, the United States ha have so many uh, Nobel Prize winners? Uh, and he has uh, examined this sort of, and he has uh, seen a, a, a pattern that there are coffee shops around the, the, the famous university areas where people tend to meet in a, in a very informal way. Uh, the, 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 the researchers find uh, new links to, to people that they wouldn't uh, find in their specific institu uh, institute or institution. Uh, they find, it, uh, find them uh, at the coffee shop. <laughs> uh, and um, I, I, I don't know how your room here at the Royal Institute of Technology looks like, but in, in uh, American universities uh, there are very shabby old furniture. We have beautiful furniture, I think, in universities in Sweden. And uh, they, they, they use their money not to furniture, but to, <laughs> to create uh, uh, better thinking and, and uh, science, uh, sort of. <laughs> well. <laughs> I agree with you. The very big difference between Europe and America is the migration. Uh, of course. It's in Europe and in Sweden, the migration is going down, but in the United States, you are migrating to mm. new That's jobs and so on. So, one very important thing uh, if you look to innovation is not to look to entrepreneurs in, in Sweden, it's, it's, it is to look to intrapreneurs. Because uh, when you make an invention in an uh, American firm, you have to left because they, you are not t told to do that. You are told to do something else. But if you make an innovation in a Swedish firm, they take care of it in another way. Most great Swedish firms are very old, but still they have been able to, to adapt to new realities. And do we do that uh, continuously in Sweden, you think? Yeah, I think so. Uh, about creativity, I, I heard the other day that uh, uh, patent, uh, the, the ones applying for patents, uh, uh, is normally 85% uh, women. In the end of, of, of the 19th century, it was also 5% women. Nothing has happened there. <laughs> Well, more questions? Oh, okay. Are we through? Coffee shop, coffee break. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much.